Artificers are technological innovators and inventors, capable of making magic with mere bolts and screws. Bards are maestros and musicians, capable of conducting symphonic magic through their instruments. As it turns out, both classes tend to focus on buffing up their allies, and together they can create sweet high-tech music. True mystical jazz. Or maybe the fantasy universe's version of prog rock. This analogy has gotten off track. When push comes to shove, do these classes really synergize at all? Not really, but we're going for aesthetics and a cool theme here rather than min-maxed combat build. There are a few fun synergies in that artificers get double their proficiency on checks made with tools, and technically, musical instruments count as tools in 5e. I guess. It may not be the most statistically efficient build at this time, but if you want a sort of funky vibe as you play a metal bard with a robot roadie and flying magical guitars, then this lovely character build is definitely going to be for you. Now, of course, there are some obvious downsides to this build. As with any multi-class combination, you give up on late game features, and the progression on some of your other features will be a lot slower. In this case especially, we're going for two spellcasting classes that don't even use the same spellcasting ability. We're going to be tight for stats, and we're going to be giving up a lot of late-game spellcasting power in favor of spellcasting versatility. And ultimately, we end up with a character about on par with a regular bard with extra steps and a thing or two extra that it can do. There isn't a specific synergy we're building for here, so there isn't much really to kick in at any point. However, the flavor of the build is really complete once we get the archetype features of both classes. So I'd say the point it kicks in, really, is an optimal form of the build at 6 level. Now when it comes to the level split with this build, I recommend going for a level 13 Artificer and level 7 Bard, which gets us the best of our Bard subclass and makes our Steel Defender a beefier tank. I also strongly recommend making Artificer your first level, as it gives us Constitution as a saving throw proficiency, which will be instrumental <laughs> in helping us maintain concentration on spells. Now when it comes to the class features that we care about, to get our steampunk rock band on the road, there are a few key features that we really need from each of our classes. Starting with the significant artificer features, we have Infuse Item. One of the artificer's most powerful abilities is to temporarily make magic items as long as you have access to an item of the same base type. So you can turn a normal sword into a plus one magic sword, for example, if only for a while. Talk to your DM as well about how they want to, well, implement permanent item creation for both mundane and magic items. We also have tool expertise. Gained at 6th level, artificers get double their proficiency on any ability check that uses tools. Interestingly, since instruments are tools and a performance skill check uses them, this will essentially give you double your proficiency bonus on your performance checks. Gained at 7th level, we get Flash of Genius. This feature lets you use your reaction to add your intelligence bonus to an ally's ability check or saving throw. This can be a huge lifesaver and really rounds us out as a support character. A really powerful support character. And then we have Battlesmith. The Battlesmith archetype is really important for the build and is honestly the only reason it works, because it provides the next few features in turn, including Battle Ready. Gained at third level with the archetype, this gives us a martial weapon proficiency and very importantly lets us use our intelligence modifier for attack and damage rolls so long as we use a magic weapon which we can easily make happen with infusions. This is vital because it lets us ignore our strength and dexterity scores to focus on our intelligence and charisma scores. And then with Steel Defender, this is where we get the robot roadie, or whatever else you want to flavor them as. The point is this beefy robot will help keep us safe in combat because it can deal a surprising amount of damage while also tanking it in return. And then we have extra attack, which obviously you know what it does. But uh, we plan on swinging our axe around a lot, and this helps push us towards actual combat effectiveness. I, there should be quotes around axe. You, you, mus you musicians know what I mean. Now with Arcane Jolt, it's important to keep in mind we won't get this until late in the build at our ninth Artificer level. But it will keep our attacks and healing relevant in the late game by adding 2d6 damage or healing whenever we need it most. Now moving on to the significant Bard features, of course we're going to start with Bardic Inspiration. The core unique feature of the Bard class requires a high charisma for number of uses, and will be a useful buff for the first level all the way up to level 20. 
And then at fifth level, we get Font of Inspiration. And this lets our Bardic Inspiration recharge on a short rest rather than a long rest. It returns Bardic Inspiration from an occasional buff to something you can use regularly every combat, and it's worth pushing this far into Bard in order to get. And then we have College of Creation, which must just be D&D's version of Liberal Arts School. This is honestly where we're going to get most of our flavor, and it has most of the features that we really want, such as Moat of Creation. Mechanically, this adds additional effects to our bardic performances. In flavor, though, it turns our bardic inspirations into literal music notes that fly magically around a person's head, or, you know, whatever other flavor you want to add to that. The music video epicness of all this, though, is strong, and I highly recommend it for anyone that likes to create cinematic scenes within their D&D campaign. Or just rip off the new Doctor Strange movie, I guess, technically. Which may have also ripped off something else. I don't, I don't know. And then we have Performance of Creation. This is one of the few places where the classes synergize. You gain this feature when you first take the archetype at third level, and it lets you create objects with the power of magic. They don't last very long, but one of the issues with Artificer Infusions is that you need the base items to infuse. With the Performance of Creation, you can just whip up literally anything you need and make your magic item out of it. Just make sure it's something that you only need for a few hours, and don't get too attached. And then with Animating Performance, this is where you can get the magic flying guitar I was telling you about. You gain it at 6th level as a feature of the archetype, and it lets you animate any item, large or smaller, into a surprisingly tanky ally. Now let's talk about Ability Scores, because this build is rough on them. But because we're able to use intelligence for our attacks, we can't be a, well, we can't be a total idiot, and we need charisma for our bardic spell's inspiration, so we can't afford to be tone deaf either. We only really need to care about our intelligence and charisma scores, with our second consideration being our constitution score. We can't be a fully intelligence-based bard since bardic performances rely on charisma, but our multi-class artificer can forego the physical scores. We want Intelligence and Charisma to be 16 or 18 as soon as possible, and I'd recommend at least a 12 in Constitution. All the other scores we can ignore for dump stats, and for armor, we can rely on medium armors if we don't mind a middling AC. When it comes to what races you should play as an Artificer, I wouldn't really say there are any wrong choices at all. But if we want to slightly optimize this admittedly unoptimized build, there are some races up here on screen that I think fit quite well, However, I would definitely like to hear what your guys' opinions are on this. You guys always come up with far more interesting answers than the optimized ones. So please let me know down in the comments what you think you'll use for this build. So how do we put this Rockstar together and how does the build really work? What we get here is a support character that brings their own party around to support while slinging spells and hit songs as they swing their mighty axe guitar around. Bards require a musical instrument as their spellcasting focus, while artificers require an artisan's tool as their spellcasting focus. Now, if your DM is really nice, they can let your instrument count as that sort of tool. And please be sure to check first. If they don't, you can just be a bit cheeky and simply use a wrench or similar tool as the pick for your epic guitar in your other hand. And... <laughs> That is a very roundabout way to make that work, and I'm sure you could come up with a way more creative solution to it, but I digress. Now that you have both the spellcasting focuses in your hand that you need, we need to be able to swing it around. We can infuse your guitar, making it into a plus one magic weapon, and since we're a battlesmith, our axe is now also a spellcasting focus for our artificer spells. Congratulations, we're now casting both artificer and bard spells through the power of rock and a plus one enchanted guitar. Now what? Now we take the band on the road. Our steel defender sticks with us, and we can animate other guitar, amps, or whatever else we fabricate and feel fits our musician character as our dancing item. Sadly, both of these friends require our bonus action to attack, but thankfully the dancing item provides a passive effect and we can simply fly it into our enemies to slow them down by 10 feet keeping them off our backs. We can then rely on our Steel Defender Rhodey's reaction to swat down the attacks that get too close to us, and if our party members aren't around, we have two excellent targets for our bardic performance notes that will physically fly around looking pretty fantastic. The end result is a full-on mob of characters and heavy metal goodness, or again, whatever music stylings fit your character. Your Master of the Strings will fill a buff, debuff, and utility role for other players with a magic axe to bring down in melee if the crowd gets a little restless. 
Both the Arvisor and the Bard spell lists are full of excellent buff spells and protection spells, giving you plenty of options to help your traveling band out. Our entire spell list will be massive, and between all the Arvisor knowledge, divination spells, and high skill checks, will be an excellent source of utility for the party. Usually at the end of these videos I have something kind of to sum up, or maybe even something analytical to say about these builds, but if someone out there runs a campaign that's just a bunch of you guys as this build, or variations of it, as a traveling band throughout the world, please tell me if you do that and how it goes. Uh, it sounds like an absolute fantasy in my head, but... I wonder if it would work out so well. Kind of like being an actual working musician. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new videos like this every week. And if you guys are going to be playing an Artificer Bard character, I would love to hear about them down in the comments. Thanks again for watching. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skullsplitter Dice, and until next time, farewell.